All right, Shalom. There's a brother in the hall from the GMS Orlando camp. I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rakakodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who are the elders of Yasha Allah, and the sincere salutation to all Yuakim, who are preaching this word and believing this word, and to the Aquath, who are believing this word in all truth and in sincerity. All right, I want to go into a lesson through the Spirit, and I'll start in Jeremiah, the 30th chapter. And I will start down at uh, verse 10. And it reads, Therefore fear thou not, O my servant Jacob, saith the Lord. Neither be dismayed, O Israel. For lo, I will save thee from afar, and thy seed from the land of their captivity. And Jacob shall return, and shall be in rest, and be quiet, and none shall make him afraid. Verse 11, For I am with thee, saith the Lord, to save thee. Though I make a full end of all nations, whither I have scattered thee, yet will I not make a full end of thee, but I will correct thee in measure and will not leave thee altogether unpunished. All right, I'm going to jump down to verse 15. And it reads, Jeremiah 30 and 15, Why criest thou for thine affliction? Thy sorrow is incurable for the multitude of thine iniquity, because thy sins were increased, I have done these things unto thee. All right, and through the Spirit, a lot of times, um, this, this present affliction will, will make you kind of lose sight of the fact that we're over here for what we've done. All right, we get on Esau because Esau is the devil. All right, he is the seed of Satan, man. However, the reason that we are over here is because of our iniquity. All right, we are guilty. All right, and the reason that the Lord has did this unto us is because our sins were increased. You know, once you wake up and you find out the sweet part of being the chosen of the Lord, you know, the truth becomes sweet in your mouth. But as you have to sit and wait and with patience, hope for that gift and that reward, and most importantly, that pardon, things begin to get bitter. And during those bitter moments, you have to realize through the spirit that we're over here for our deeds. All right. We're over here because we've transgressed against the Heavenly Father. And for that cause, he's done this to us. He said that he will save us. However, he's going to correct us in measure. All right. And just because we've acknowledged that we've sinned. Doesn't mean that the sentence is lifted. All right. Just like in the prison system, you can regret what you've done. But in, in uh, Esau's judicial system, once you've committed the crime, whatever time the judge gave you, you still have to do that time. You can be sorrowful the whole time, but you still have to do that time until you're eligible for what? For parole. Now, we see according to prophecy that our salvation is nearer than we believe. Lord willing, we're part of that number. But understand that we're, we're asking the Lord to pardon us. All right. The reason we need to be saved is because we're guilty of the sentence. And we're leaning on the Heavenly Father for mercy to pardon us for our iniquity. And our suffering right now is a small price to pay compared to what we've actually done in the spirit, man. All right. We've offended the Lord. You know, when you go through our history, a lot of our people lose sight of the fact that our nation were in the land of Israel behind trees and in groves eating mouse. All right. Put, putting abominable foods in their broth. All right. Committing adultery. Wearing fringes, doing all of these things, man. Putting each other to death backbiting, stealing, idolatry in the worst way. You know, the um, Apostle Gabar went into this, and a lot of Jake got offended, that when you go, when, when it says Solomon went after other gods, all right, it don't mean that you just meditate on it. And what that means for Israel is that Jake were, were they were into these practices concerning idolatry. They were into the festivities, whether it was bestiality, or rather it was uh, homosexuality. And they were doing these deeds with fringes on, man. And we are all guilty of this sentence that we've received, man. We all fall short and come. We all fall short of the glory of the Heavenly Father. And for that reason, we've been put in this position. And being in 2021 in this present day, Sometimes it's easy to lose sight of all the things and, and the chances the Lord has given us and all the deeds that have been done.
for us to get to this moment that we're at now. All right, real quick. I want to grab this precept. This is Job 11 and 6. And that he would show thee the secrets of wisdom, that they are double that which is. Know therefore that the Most High exacteth of thee less than thine iniquity deserveth. All right, so even the present moment that we're in is a show of mercy. Even the punishment the Lord has given us is a show of mercy. But the fact that we even have an opportunity to come home according to the promises made to our forefathers, all right, is a show of mercy. So this indignation that we have to bear because we sinned against the Lord is a small price to pay, man. All right, uh, me and the brothers were going into this uh, last night when we were... Uh, when we were fellowshipping, and you look at all the deeds of Israel when we were in the land, all right, wearing fringes, where the Lord gave us the laws, and the laws were supposed to be our, our culture. You had Jake who were by day serving the Lord and by night serving uh, uh, idols, serving other gods. And to serve those other gods is to get into the deeds of those other gods. Passing your children to Molech. These things happen, man. When you go into the details of the the, the rights of Molech, if you will. People would sit by and play flutes and trumps and yell and, and try to drown out the noise of the children that were screaming as they were being burnt alive. These things we've done to get here, man. And a lot of times, Jake lose sight of that. We ain't innocent, man. We ain't innocent. We did the dirt to get over here through the spirit as a nation of people. Scriptures say the remnant will return. But understand that we're returning through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shemel Shai and seeking a pardon from Yahweh by Shemel Shai because we're guilty. Even now, man, we fall short. And that puts you in a different mindset when you understand that. Micah, Micah 7 and 9 reads, I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him. In a past life, we've all had a part to play in where we are now, man. And for some of our people, that's a hard pill to swallow, but swallow it and deal. Because that's what it is. The curse done cleaved unto you is because you've played a part in our position on, on the earth, where we at right now. That's why we're asking the Lord to pardon us for our iniquity, man. Yeah, working for Esau is hell, man. Yeah, having to drink your water by measure. And barely pay your bills. Yeah, that's tough. But compared to what we did to the Lord, is it not mercy? Now, I'm not saying that it don't, it don't get to you some days. But at the end of the day, on those days when they get to you, you got to remember, we did dirt to get here, man. We forsook the Father when he set us up decent. And we looked at serving him like a chore. And we looked at serving other gods like a playground. That happened, man. We ain't over here because we innocent, bro. And even now you got camps that are trying to lead Jake down the same road that put us in this position. The same road that got us over here wearing jeans and trying to scream at our people who we are. You have those of the circumcision who are continuing to lead the flock down that same path that that put us here, man. We're not innocent, bro. Micah 7 and 9, again, it reads, I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him until he plead my cause and execute judgment for me. He will bring me forth to the light and I shall behold his righteousness. Our hope is that if we do what is required of us to the best of our ability, the Lord will give us mercy. That is what salvation is. The elect are predestinated to receive that salvation. But as it stands this day, that's not a guaranteed position for us. We don't know. And our request, our hope that we rejoice in is that the Lord will look at our 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 shortcomings, man, our sins, our dirt in this life and the past life and say, you know what? You good. Don't worry about it. I'm going to forget about that. 
That's what we're hoping for. When they say the righteous shall scarcely be saved, all right, in a twinkling of an eye, they're going to be saved because the Lord's going to do what? He's going to have mercy on them. And that's what we're praying for and we're hoping for. That's what we're fighting for, a pardon. And the reason I keep reiterating that is because we're not entitled to it, man. Eventually, all Israel will be saved. But on this first go round, everything we're suffering is a light affliction compared to what we've done to get here. Real quick, Lamentation or Lamentations, chapter 3, and I'm going to jump down to 39. All right, and it reads, Wherefore doth a living man complain, a man for the punishment of his sins? Let us search and try our ways and turn again to the Lord, man. And just because we turn to the Lord don't mean he, he just going to unlock the gates for you. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. That if you endure chastening, the Lord dealeth with you as with sons. And in the grand scheme, all right, this is mercy. This is the greatest form of mercy the Lord could ever show us, man. And to suffer eating noodles and, and barely paying your bills is a small price to pay. Because we did the dirt, man. Even now, our people are provoking the Lord to anger, man. And the fact that we have this truth through the spirit puts us in, in a good standing as it stands this day. But understand, nothing is guaranteed. That's why the scriptures say we have to endure until the end. And that present, that reward at the end is a pardon. This is... Psalms 32 and 2. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no guile. Now, is that going to be according to works? No. But that is going to be according to the Lord's mercy, that he's pardoned those spirits from their iniquity, man. Even in this flesh, we have done things in this lifetime. That makes us undeserving of the truth that we now possess. When you go into the uh, parable of the prodigal son, we are those prodigal sons that were living amongst the heathen. How we wanted to live. And we destroyed our own way by forsaking the heavenly father. And now we're coming back to our father and asking him to forgive us for being foolish, man. Now, the Lord will save and he will abundantly pardon. But we have to ever be mindful of how we got here, man. All right. We again, we are not innocent, man. We've done the deed. And that's why King David said this. Psalms 32 and 2. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity and in whose spirit there is no guile. All right. Romans 4 and 6. Even as David also describeth. The blessedness of the man unto whom the Most High imputeth righteousness without works. And that's what we're praying for. We're hoping for that position, for that to, to be a doorkeeper, if it be in the uh, will of the Heavenly Father. Because we understand that we're fighting from a position where we don't deserve what we have right now. When the scriptures talk about Jeshron, wax fat and kick, what does that mean? That means we were in our our glory, so to speak, and our rest, and we took it for granted. You have to, when you read the scriptures of what we've done to get here, you have to, you have to imagine being there. Imagine wearing fringes and, and, and seeing these things. And, and for some of us, being a part of these things, man. Because you don't know. Being in fringes, walking around the earth at one point in time and doing all of this folly as a nation of people to get us over on this side of earth. We've done things to get here, man. And we're fighting for the Lord to look at our iniquity, to look at our dirt and say, clean him off and give him a good garment. He good in my eyes. We're praying that our father look at us and, and say, all right, that's my son again. You know, that's my daughter, whatever the case. 
we're praying that the Lord will look at us like that, man. And, and a lot of Jake don't consider the latter end that you have to meet your maker. That ain't just going to be YouTube uh, videos and comment boards. That eventually we're going to meet him. And that what we're fighting for right now, all right, is mercy. We're fighting for mercy through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shemel Shai. And when you understand that, when you're mindful of that, you move differently. Yes, we hope and we rejoice and we're confident that the Lord is who he say he is. And if he's going to pardon those, he's going to pardon them. And we have hope that we're part of that number. But on the days where it get tough, we have to ever be mindful of what we did to get here, man. Real quick, if I may, I want to get an example. All right, bear with me. This is Isaiah 65 and 2. I have spread out my hands all the day unto a rebellious people, which walketh in a way that was not good, after their own thoughts, a people that provoketh me to anger continually to my face, that sacrificeth in gardens and burneth incense upon altars of brick, which remain among the graves and lodge in the monuments, which eat swine's flesh and broth of abominable things is in their vessels, which say, stand by thyself, come not near to me, for I am holier than thou. These are a smoke in my nose, a fire that burneth all the day. Behold, it is written before me, I will not keep silence, but will recompense, even recompense into their bosom. And what we're tasting is the recompense that we've provoked the Lord to anger. There's always been a remnant, but again, we've all fallen short. Small or large, we've all played a role in getting ourselves in this, uh, this predicament. And as we understand this truth through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shemel Shai, we must ever be mindful that the Lord is showing us mercy because we have done the crime to get where we are. All right, Esau is the devil, but he was made to be who he is. And the reason he's over us is because of what we've done to the Heavenly Father, man. All right, real quick. This is Isaiah. Let me see. This is Isaiah chapter... Yep, Slakia. Yep, this is Isaiah uh, 42 and 24, Salakia. Uh Verse 24 reads, Who gave Jacob for a spoil and Israel to the robbers? Did not the Lord, he against whom we have sinned, for they would not walk in his ways, neither were they obedient, unto his law. Therefore he hath poured upon him the fury of his anger and the strength of battle, and it hath set him on fire round about, yet he knew not, and it burned him, yet he laid it not to heart, man. And that's what two thirds of our people are doing currently. They're not laying it to heart that the Lord poured his anger upon us, man. And that's why we're in these uh, predicaments. That's why we're in these situations. But just because the Lord gave us the truth as it stands this day, Lord willing, we're part of that number. It doesn't mean that we're we're not going to be chastened. Because we're still being recompensed. We're still being corrected in measure according to the will of the Heavenly Father. And even this that we're going through is a light affliction and is less than we deserve. And when you think about it from that perspective, it's the water Yahweh by Shemel Shai. For our daily bread, for getting us from point A to point B safely. For being able to wake up in our right mind to look at the news and understand, to call upon the name of the Lord. When you understand that you're guilty and you've been blessed with mercy through the Lord letting you know who you are again in these last days, which means you have a shot at salvation. It's different when you understand we're guilty, man. And it's the great favor of the Lord that we have this truth right now, even if you only have the milk. So I just want to go into that through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shemel Shai. 
All right, Lord willing, this was edifying with that. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rakakudash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who are the elders of Yasha Allah, and the sincere salutation to all you Akim, who are preaching this word and believing this word, and to the Akwa, who are believing this word in all truth and in sincerity. Shalom.